Hey dudes, do the Builder here, and in this episode of Zig in Death, we're going to be looking at names and numbers. Uh, when I say names, I'm referring to what other languages call variables, but since we have constants and variables in Zig, I wanted to uh, use a term that could be applied to both of them. But basically, uh, you can just um, treat them like other languages treat the concept of variables. Okay? Uh, it's like simply assigning a name to a location in memory that holds a value. Okay. So um, when we're talking about variables and constants in Zig, those names use snake case. Okay. So we're going to use the underscore to separate words in the name. Okay. Here we have an example of a global constant. We use the const keyword, which defines it as a constant, giving it the name global const. The colon here specifies that we're going to give it the type and here it's a U8, which is an 8-bit unsigned integer. We're going to be looking at numeric types in a bit. Uh, unsigned 8-bit eight, integer is basically a byte, what, what we normally know as a byte in, in most architectures. Um, and here we're assigning the initial value. And we're going to see later on that we have to do that. Uh, and, and even more so with constants, because constants are immutable. You can't change them once you uh, initially uh, define them. Here we have a global variable, and it's pretty much the same uh, structure of the definition, except that we're using the var keyword. Okay, we have the name, we have the type, and we're assigning initial an initial value. Uh, var uh, variables defined with var are mutable, so you can change them later on. Okay, um, so that's basically the two types of names that we can define: the constant and the variable. One is immutable, and one is mutable. And here we call them global because they're not defined within any function. They're pretty much at the file level, so you can uh, use them from anywhere in, in, in the scopes within this file. Um, here, uh, this function is really not relevant to what we're going to be talking about in this video, but I, uh, it's, it's uh, just a, a utility function uh, to print out uh, a value and its type. But we can use it um, to uh, show that functions in Zig the names, they use camel case, okay? So we start with the lowercase, and any other word in the name will begin with an uppercase letter, okay? Now, within the main function, we have some more output formatting here. That's not really important. But let's look uh, at, uh, officially, what a const is. Here we have the definition of a const, okay? And uh, as you can see, uh, it's not required to give the constant the type. So basically, uh, Zig will do type inference here, and we'll see that uh, a const here, we're assigning it the number one, and this is uh, basically an integer literal, and integer literals uh, without specifying a type will have the special type comp time int. So we'll be looking at that a little further down in this video. Um, uh, once you uh, define the constant and assign it the initial value, you can't modify it, okay? Let's move on to this tab. You're going to see that I'm, I'm, I'm using this command zbr. This is actually uh, an alias for, for sig build run that I defined in the shell, okay? So we can speed up the typing. And now, um, here uh, we have this little table. These are uh, different output lines from, from different parts of this uh, program that we're going to be working with. Uh, but we're at this currently at this level, the a const. Okay, the name is a const. It's telling me the value is 1, and effectively it's showing me that the type is com time int. Okay, uh, going back here to the, to the code, let's look at a uh, definition of a variable now. Um, pretty much we're defining here the name is avar okay and uh, we're giving it the type u8 and assigning it the value uh, 2 since it's a variable we can um, uh, modify it here we had this line commented out if we uncomment that line and try to build and run we're gonna get a compiler it's going to tell us uh, effectively that we cannot assign to a constant, okay? This, this is not allowed because a const is effectively a constant, okay? Let's go back here. There is no problem with avar because it's a variable, okay? 
Now um, let's undo that and comment that line again. We have here um, that uh, variables, um, unlike constants, which uh, can or 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 may not have the type when you define them, the variables are required to have a type, or they must be comp time. And comp time is a concept that's really important in Zig. We're going to be looking at that in detail in further uh, videos but basically it's a shortening of the two terms compile time and what it means is that you have to have values that are known when the program is being compiled so it, it cannot be anything that requires the program to run to to evaluate something it has to be something that's provided right at compile time so um, when we have uh, this type of expression uh, definition sorry uh, we're basically here defining a variable, but we're not telling which type it is, okay? So, let's comment this. And let's go here and run it. And here we have a compiler that's saying that the variable of type comptime int must be uh, const or comp time, okay? So, what does this mean basically? It's uh, telling us that we are defining a variable, but we're not giving it a type, okay? So, it either has to be a comp time variable, as we have here. Let's comment this out and uncomment this one. Run it. And now we don't have any problem. Now, the other way we can make this work is, well, giving it a type. Okay, now we're saying that it's a U8, okay? So, if we run it, we see that we don't have any, any issues, okay? Let's go back here. And um, both constants and variables uh, have to be initialized. You have to give them an initial value. It's not like in some other programming languages where you can just define them and not give them any value and then later on you assign a value. In Zig, they must have uh, an initial value. They have to be initialized. So any of these two lines is not valid, okay? If I uncomment this, I already get an error here from, from uh, the language server. It's saying that the variable must be initialized, okay? So let's comment that back. Let's uncomment this one. And we see that we get the same exact error, okay? So, um, what if uh, you have the situation, which is uh, not so rare in programming, that you are defining a variable and you need it because you're gonna need, you're gonna use it in some deeper scope, but uh, at the point of definition you don't have a value for it. Um, the value is gonna be determined later on. Well, for that uh, you can use undefined. Okay the undefined keyword is actually a predefined value in Zig and what it means is precisely that uh, we don't have a value defined yet for this variable so it's basically like a placeholder uh, but it, it allows you to define the variable but you, you really do not want to use this variable unless you have actually assigned a, a valid value to it we're going to see what happens here here we're going to print right away the 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 value and the type of this variable and you're gonna see that we get like some garbage out of it and here we actually assign a value and now when we print we get uh, re, uh, the actual uh, value okay so let's save this let's run it and what do we what do we see here we, we have dvar okay and in the value it says 170 and where did that come from? Well, that's actually that garbage value that I told you. Um, since dvar is undefined and we're trying to access that value, we could basically get anything here, and this could be a problem. So it's really important that if you do use this um, feature that the language provides uh, for convenience, um, you, you realize that you shouldn't be using a variable that's undefined, okay? Uh, down here now dvar we assigned the value 3 so it's working as it should okay let's go back here
Okay, uh, in Zig, another uh, requirement of the language is that you can't, if, you, if you define a name, you have to use it. You just simply can't define a variable and, and then not use it anywhere in your program. That's an error in Zig. And um, there was like a pretty much heated debate of whether this should be an error or not. Um, in my case, I believe it's, it's, it's a good idea that it's an error because it, it prevents you from defining variables and then uh, you never use them and you have these variables scattered all around. Or you, you have similarly named variables and you're using the wrong one and you never know. Um, because uh, the compiler is not going to help you telling you, hey, you defined this variable and you never used it. Okay, So here, let's comment this out. And immediately we're going to see um, that we have this error that says unused local variable. Okay, So if I remove this comment, now the error goes away. And uh, what are we doing? It's, it's like a workaround here that you're going to find uh, commonly. Uh, when people, uh, maybe under the development process, you, you want to just uh, define this variable to remember that, you, that you're going to later on need it. But at the moment, you're still prototyping and, and you're not actually using it. Well, you can assign it to the underscore. The underscore is like the special name that you can use to uh, basically ignore things in Zig. Um, this tells the compiler, um, yeah, I'm assigning this to an underscore. So I'm actually using the name Evar, but um, nothing is going to practically happen here, OK? OK, so now having seen uh, names, um, variables, and constants, let's move on to the types. Uh, and uh, the first types that we're going to be seeing are the numeric types in Zig. The integers, specifically, we have the unsigned integers. And you're going to see that um, these types are pretty much common in systems programming languages. We have the U8. The, the U starts for, uh, stands for unsigned. 8 is the number of bits, OK? So the size of this integer. And it also defines the range, well, 8 bits. Uh, so an unsigned integer is going gonna, it's gonna to pretty much define a range from 0 to 255, OK? So uh, we have the U16, U32, U64. U size is uh, going to be the, um, an integer with size equal to the address size of the architecture that you're going to be using. So for example, if it's a 64-bit architecture, the U size will be 64 bits. And as you can see here, uh, in Zig, which is something uh, different, you can have arbitrary sizes for integers, OK? So basically, after that u, you can put anything from 0 to 65,535. Um, it all depends on the hardware, if it's going to be capable of handling really big um, integer sizes. Uh, but uh, the arbitrary integer sizes can really come in handy. Um, both for um, semantic uh, value in your programs and also the compiler can use this to make certain optimizations, okay? Uh, when we're looking at the I size uh, or the uh, signed integers, um, we have basically the same, um, the same uh, nomenclature for the names. The I size, once again, it's going to be the size of the uh, address uh, size in your target architecture. And uh, the literals can be decimal, they can be binary, they can be octal or hexadecimal. And you can use uh, optional underscores for readability. Uh, this is lately uh, the, the latest fad in programming languages. <laughs> so here we have an example of a decimal integer literal with underscores. Here we have a hexadecimal notation. Here we have octal, and this is binary. Um, here we see uh, that uh, we're giving this f bar the type u1. Okay, so we're seeing an example of these arbitrary integer sizes. A u1 is only one bit, so uh, it could uh, only hold the values zero and one. Okay. So um, here, if I uncomment this line, we try to run it, we precisely get the compiler. It says type U1 cannot 
uh, represent integer value 2 okay that's basically out of range for that type okay so uh, we could use that as I said for uh, its semantic value in this case uh, we, we, we want a type that can only hold 0 or 1 okay here uh, we, we see an example of uh, how zig itself uh, at the language level uses an arbitrary sized int uh, in this case the u21 to represent a Unicode character code point because uh, code points um, basically can only use maximum of 21 bits. Most other languages you're going to see that they use a 32 bit integer, um, but Zib can be more precise in that in that aspect and use uh, exactly the U21 uh, type. Okay, and finally, uh, in in case of the integers, we have the comp time int type type. Uh, comp time int is the type of integer literals okay so when I define this constant here and I don't give it a type an explicit type it, it means that it has the type comp time int and we're gonna see later on uh, in the course when we talk about uh, type coercion and casting uh, comp time int comes in really handy because it basically can be coerced to any other type so you can assign it to variables of any other integer type now let's look at floating point. Floating point numbers, we have F16, F32, F64, F1, F80, and F128. Uh, these are basically uh, as defined by the IEEE 754 uh, floating point standard. And uh, we can have literals in uh, using decimal with um, exponents or hexadecimal. Here we see that we use we can use the capital E or the lowercase e uh, for the exponents, or we can leave the exponent out. Okay, and here we have examples of floating point using hexadecimal uh, notation. In that case, we use the p because uh, since the e is one of the hexadecimal um, digits, uh, we use the p it can be lowercase or uppercase. Okay, for the exponent part, and like with integers, we can also use the underscores to, for readability, okay? In the case of floating point numbers, uh, there are some special values, also known as the subnormals. Um, we have uh, positive and negative infinities, and for that in Zig, we're going to use the standard library, the stat, uh, specifically in the math uh, namespace. We have the inf, and we give it the type, uh, and this would be the positive and negative infinities for the F64 type. And this would be the NAND, not a number, for the F64 type, okay? And as with the ints, we have the comp time float, okay? So if we're defining here a constant, we're not giving it an explicit type, that will have the type comp time float, as we saw here in the, I in the output. Let's see it again. So here we go. Um, the value here, you're seeing it, it's being uh, printed with, in, with the exponent, scientific notation. And the uh, type is comp time float. And we're going to be seeing uh, later on in the course how uh, comp time int and comp time float are, uh, com come in handy and make the language much more uh, flexible when we're talking about um, coercion, type coercion. Okay? So uh, that's pretty much it uh, when it comes to names and numbers in Zig. That's what I wanted to cover. We'll be seeing uh, later on the operations that we can uh, apply to these numeric types. But for now, um, this is pretty much what I wanted to cover. So uh, here did the builder. I'll see you in the next one.